subscribe. Welcome to Spark Up. I'm your host, Russell Envy. Thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel that is all about Upland tutorials, tips, and tricks. Now, in this video, I want to teach you about a phrase I use all of the time, which is called the Upland Income Cycle. These are core functions in the game that you can utilize to your benefit to bring in more income. The three that I'm going to be talking about in this video are property yield, spark rental, and treasure hunting. Property yield is always looking me in the face and I neglect it and because I neglected it, I have been missing out on extra UPX a month. I want to show you that. Spark rental is something that I can talk days about, but I want to teach you how to identify good builds or how to maximize the most spark rental and earn the most UPX for lending out your spark. And then treasure hunting, it is what I'm known for in the game, but you can replace treasure hunting with flipping legits, flipping cars, flipping block explorers, flipping outdoor decor, flipping structure ornaments. There are so many ways that you can bring in income in the game. So if you do not have a strategy or if you have not heard the Upland income cycle, let me show you what I'm doing to maybe generate your Upland income cycle. Now, I was talking with Uplando the other day and he reassured me that property yield is still his solid base for staying alive and well in Upland. Without property yield, he wouldn't be anywhere. Uplando does not have time to treasure hunt. He's not really flipping properties. He's running his businesses. So property yield is something that matters to him a lot. But he said something to me that I've always known, but until he said it, it didn't hit me the right way. And what Uplando said was, even in the game right now, you earn 14% of whatever the property mint is. So you can see with this property right here, I earned or I paid 29,000 upix to purchase this property and I'm earning 360 upix a month just because I own this property. Now, let's say tomorrow Upland changes that 14% down to 10 or down to 7, down to 8. Doesn't matter. You still are earning the most you can by holding on to these properties. So property yield is something that you should always be looking at. You don't have to stare at it all day, every day, but it is something that you should be giving attention to at least to once a week. Now, what I want to show you is when you come into the settings and click on properties, right here you'll see where it says UPX per month. This is what you bring in to your account every month just by holding properties. Now, some of this is because you have properties and collections. They're getting that boosted collection price. But everything, if it's not sitting in the collection, it still earns you something. So you want to pay attention to this number and you want to try to grow it if you can. The best way to grow this number is to hold on to properties that earn you a lot of yield every single month. So the way that I do that is I like to mint or I like to buy properties with a higher mint value. We're gonna come over to one of my favorite websites, which is UPX land, and I'm looking to buy properties in San Francisco. Now, if I scroll down, I'm looking at these properties and each one of these looks like a great deal for me. I like the sale price. These are all competitive, but how do I know which one has the higher yield? And that is easy to tell by looking at the mint price. 
Let's take this property right here, 52 Bixby Street, and you can see that it cost 2,990 Upix to mint. Now, if we go look at this by hitting this little detailed information, it's going to bring up this card, and you can see that 52 Bixby by itself, if it's not part of a collection, it's going to earn you 36.17 Upix. If it's part of a collection, it can earn you up to 43.4. This is not amazing, this is a small amount of Upix, but it does help. But it, if you look at this property down here, see where it says 7,040 to mint this property? If we hit this detail card, this one by itself earns you 85 Upix a month. So, even though there's a small difference, right? You have 23,500 and then you have basically 25,000 uh, Upix for the sales price, I would tend to buy this one here, the 24th Avenue, um, simply because it has a little bit bigger UP2, but the mint price is larger than this other one, even these ones here. The, the mint price on this is larger than these 10 that we can see here. For me, I want to build my yield, so in order to build my yield, I need to own properties that have a higher mint price. Now we can go in Bel Air, and Bel Air is a great place to earn property yield. There's a lot of collections out there, there's a lot of properties out there that are not even part of collections that you can still earn a lot of money with. Now look at Green Turtle here. Green Turtle has this property on sale, and he's earning $3.52 on this a month. And if he were to put this in collections, look at this. If he put this in his City Pro collection, he could be earning almost $5 a month. There are great advantages to owning these large properties. So, you know, when you're looking to build that property yield, you always want to take into consideration what it costs to mint that property because that is how much yield you're going to earn. Now, the last thing I want to talk to you about about property yield is utilizing your collections with tools like UPX LAN and the Upland Optimizer. These are my collections here. I'm in Las Vegas right now treasure hunting, so that obviously comes up for me. But the three collections that I tend to the most are the newbie collection. This property for me is always rotating. King of the Street is another collection that is always rotating for me. And City Pro, this is also rotating for me. So what I mean by that is every time you buy a new property in the game, that property might replace another one in a collection. Like for example, if I go buy three more properties and they're all on the same street, they might earn me more UPX than my current properties that are in King of the Street. So I'm going to come and I'm going to replace the three that I have now with the three that I just bought. But those three properties that were earning me a lot of money on King of the Street, they might be worth more to me sitting in the newbie position than whatever property I have in my newbie. So right now, this is what I have here. I have this property that's earning me 543 Upix a month just because it's sitting here. But if I were to go buy another property and change it out and maybe, you know, let's say I buy another Charleston and instead of this one that earns me a dollar a month, maybe earns me two dollars a month. Right now, I know that if I were to go put this in the newbie collection, I'm going to be earning more on this one property than what I have sitting here. So I would replace my king of the street and I would shift them over to newbie with one property. And I do the same thing with my City Pro. When I'm looking to buy properties in Los Angeles, I either want to buy a property that's going to be in one of these collections, but if I can't afford to do that, I want to buy a property in LA where my City Pro collection is because I want to boost these earnings. This one right here earns me $3. This one here earns me like $2. There's a way to maximize these, but if I were to go into Los Angeles right now and I were to start looking at some of these, there's a lot of large properties like this. This one's going to cost me 276 
thousand epics. But if I put it in the City Pro collection, it's going to earn me 4,684 epics a month. Now, is that good? Is that bad? Let's go take a look. If I want to buy this property, put it in my City Pro collection, uh, let's look at this Van Nuys property. What is this earning me? Yeah, see, this is only earning me 1,899 epics a month. I would gladly replace Van Nuys with this property that I'm building. Now that I do that, right, let's look at this. Let's go to my City Pro again. Let's use Van Nuys. What does it give me if I put it in the newbie collection? See, it earns me 1,492 epics in the newbie. It even earns me more in Los Angeles. So what I would do here, let's say I want to buy this property that we were just looking at. I would buy this and I would replace, sorry, not in treasures. I would replace my City Pro with this Van Nuys right here. So I would put this property, I'd take Van Nuys out and I'd put in that property that I just built. Then I would take this Van Nuys property and I'd come here to, uh, well, I gotta go to Los Angeles. But now I come to my Los Angeles collection and I'm gonna remove one of these. Now, whichever one is earning me the less uh, per month in this collection is the one I would replace, like maybe Fulton. But then I would look at Fulton and I would say, what does Fulton earn me if I put it in newbie? See, Fulton would earn me 705. So I would take Fulton and I would go replace my newbie because my newbie, what is it earning me again? That's right, it's earning me like 500 epics a month. So let's go to newbie, let's go look at this. Van Nuys, see this one's earning me five. So just by buying one property and replacing it with uh or replacing one property in in a collection that i have i could potentially maximize three collections i'm boosting my city pro i'm boosting my los angeles collection and i'm boosting my newbie collection those are all great ways to build again that property yield now, UPX land, like I was doing earlier, this is a great website. Whether you're looking on the secondary market or you're looking to mint properties, this is a great way for you to see what's out there, to see how much money or how much UPEX you need to buy properties to build your yield. Now, the last thing that I want to talk to you about here with property yield is the Upland Optimizer. Now, UPX Land, they just released a brand new uh, website. Not brand new, but like new functionality, right? So if you actually pay for their premium tools, which is $5.99 a month or $60 a year, uh, they have a tool to help you optimize your collections, which is great. Now, I already use the UplandOptimizer.com. Uh, I signed up, I created an account, I'm also part of the Discord server. There is a very small process to get started. But once you are on the Upland Optimizer, I like to come to Tools and I'll go to Optimizer and then I will run this. And upon running this, uh, you're gonna see a few things, but right here where it says Optimized Collections, this will tell you what properties you are currently holding on to that you should be putting into these collections. So for example, this is my standard City Pro collection. And you can see that these properties together earn me uh, 6,124 UPEX. But if I put them into this collection, I can turn that number into 8,574. So, I actually do this about once a month now. I spend my time treasure hunting, spark renting, and I will take whatever I bring income into the game. I will go and buy new properties. Once I buy new properties, I will come, I will run this tool, and I will see which collections I need to change or what properties I need to switch out to maximize my property yield. So with property yield, what you want to do, you want to find properties that earn you the most money, and you do that by looking at the mint price, 
or the UP2 score. Secondary, minting, doesn't matter. You want to look at that mint price or the UP2 rating. And you want to utilize your collections by using tools like the Upland Optimizer and UPX Land. Hopefully that has inspired you to maybe go and look at your property yield, see where you are leaving money on the table. For me, like I said, I was earning like 87,000 Upix. I ran the Upland Optimizer and it got me up to 91. Few small things like that a month can really help you bring in more income in the game, which helps you with your Upland income cycle. Spark Rental. Spark Rental is one of those things that keeps on giving. Now, I am a big treasure hunter, and when Spark Week first started, I was collecting gobs of Spark. Every single time that you could earn Spark, whether it was Spark Week, leveling up, doing a tour, um, winning with Portage Park in some of the challenges, I participate in everything I can to bring in Spark. Spark Rental is a great way all you have to do is place your spark on a property that is paying you to stake your spark and you earn in free income it's easily one of the easiest things to do in the game i get asked all the time which exchange i use to rent my spark and this is it i use the upx spark exchange this is created by mossy jake It's one of my favorite tools. It's pretty easy to register. Uh, Basically, you create an account. It's going to ask you for your EOS ID number. There's a way to find that. And then you put up a property for sale just so the website can verify that you own the property. And then you can start staking your Spark, which is pretty cool. Once you log into the UPX Spark Exchange, you can see your username, your EOS ID, but you can see how much you are owed in the bank right now, and you can withdraw this at any time. But when you're looking at the Spark market, what I do is I come over here and I look at the live listings. The best piece of advice I can give you for staking your Spark is you want to stake more than 50% of the possible Spark on a build. So for example, let's look at this micro house, right? If we come here, you can see that there is 24 available spark that you can stake on this type of building. So what you want to do is you want to have at least 50% or more of the spark staked on this build and then you're going to earn 50% of or you know whatever it is of the build cost. Now this all correlates together. A lot of people that I talk to in the game whether I'm giving advice or just doing something really really simple, they look at the UPX spark per hour. There's many people in the game that say if it's below 20 UPX an hour, I don't even rent my spark. And that's okay by me because I am cleaning up all of this money. If you do not want to loan out your spark for a certain price, I understand. For me, I am all about generating income to help my upland income cycle. So I really do not care so much about whatever the UPX spark per hour is. I like to look at how much spark can I stake? 706 is not bad, but like we said, this is 24 spark that you can put on this micro house, but for this build, you can only put four on there. That's not bad, but it's only for three hours. So this isn't going to earn you a lot of uh, UPX because it's, it's a small amount of spark for a small number of hours, and it's only for uh, three hours. That's not very much. I like to look at the size of the building. So I will sort by building size. I like to look for large apartments or I like to look at something that has a lot of spark hours. See, for me, the bigger the build, it means the more UPX is going to get paid out. So this large building, it costs more to build a large building than it does a micro house. 
Remember that micro house that we were just looking at? Let's go in here and let's look at this and you can see that this person paid 6,400 upix, 6,500 upix to get this build listed on the Spark Exchange. Now, if we go back here and we sort by buildings, let's look at this large apartment building and you can see that this person, they paid 57,995 upix to get this build listed. So you can see that like you obviously want to stake your spark here compared to that micro house. There's more hours available and the build cost is worth more than that other house. So the bigger the build, that means the more UPX is going to get paid out to all the people down here that stake their spark. And that's actually my strategy for renting spark. I look at the build cost, right? You want to stake more than 50% of the available Spark if you can on a bigger project that has a higher build cost, and that's how you bring in more income. So 57,000, if you divide that by two, that would be 50%. 57,995 divided by two. You know, if you own 50 per, or if you stake 15 out of the 30 spark here, that could earn you 28,000 upix. Now, again, that's not a lot of money compared to back in the day when we used to rent spark for 20, 25, 35 UPX per hour. But still, like in the market that we are currently in, there is still a way for you to bring in money in the game, and that is by putting a certain percentage down and earning a certain percentage of the build cost. At least that's how I look at it. I no longer care about chasing the UPX per hour. I no longer care on, on helping people with smaller builds. For me, I want to make the most UPX I can. So I look at the building. I look at how much spark is remaining and then I will go into the actual build contract and I will go look at the build cost. Can I get 50%, 60, 70% of this build cost? If I can, you know, 60, 70% of, you know, 30,000, that's pretty good compared to the other one, like we showed you earlier, 6,500 upix. If you staked all of the spark on that last build, no matter what, at the end of the day, you're only walking out with 6,500 upix. I would rather walk out with more, and you can do that by looking at bigger buildings, longer staking periods, but also that build cost. So those are the two things that I do, property yield, spark rentals. Together, those go hand in hand. If you're not doing any kind of flipping, whether you are treasure hunting, flipping properties, flipping cars, flipping legits, whatever it is, you can use your spark rental to bring in more UPX per month, and then that can help you buy new properties to build your yield. Now, the last thing that I want to talk to you about is treasure hunting. Treasure hunting, this is part of my upland income cycle, but you can change out treasure hunting for flipping legits, flipping block explorers, flipping properties, flipping cars, whatever it is you want to do. Or you can also treasure hunt and flip cars. Treasure hunt, flip cars, and flip legits. There are so many ways to bring in income in the game. But for me, treasure hunting is my main source of income. So when I treasure hunt, I like to consider it trading sends for spark. Trading sends for spark is another term I use, just like the upland income cycle. Trade your sends for spark is a term I use to try and teach people how they are leaving money on the table every single day. This is my little block explorer, and I'm currently holding on to six sends. So I'm gonna go ahead and collect this right here, and now I have nine sends. So you can always hold up to 11 sends on you at a time. But every single day in the game of Upland, um, at 5 p.m. Pacific time, the amount of sends that you can collect per day changes. 
So every single day, you can collect 80 cents a day. Eight, zero, 80. So whether you use all 80 or not, no matter what, at the end of the day, you can only collect up to 80 cents a day. I treasure hunt. I don't send the properties. I'm not minting very often. Like nine out of 10 times, like my block explorer, if I'm not treasure hunting, it's just floating around. It's not doing me any good. So what I try to do is at the end of the day, let's say two hours before that 5 p.m. Pacific time when the sends reset, I will use all of the sends that I have left. So I treasure hunt all day long, and let's say out of those 80 sends, let's say I use 20, right? So now I still have 60 sends remaining that I'm going to lose at the time when the send reset counter resets. So instead of losing those 60 sends, what I will do is I will come here and I will go into my treasures, I will go into my standards, I will spawn my free one that you get every single day, but then I will sit here and spawn as many standards as I can until I get the little message on my screen that says, you have collected all of the sends that you are allowed to for this day, you can earn more tomorrow. There are a lot of people in this game, OG players that I talk to on a regular basis, that once I said, trade your sends for Spark, it just clicked to them. And they are now doing this every single day. They realized that without using all of your sends, you are not able to collect the most amount of spark or the most amount of UPX that you can bring in in one day. You're leaving money on the table. Utilize those sends. Maximize everything you can. Now, standard treasure hunting is still affordable. I'm hunting right now in Las Vegas, which is a, I believe it's a tier three city. What I do currently right now is I hunt in Las Vegas. I spend all day waiting to get a notification on my phone that there is a competitive treasure hunt. Once the competitive treasure hunt is done, I will do one, two, or maybe three standard hunts for every one competitive hunt. So I just did a competitive hunt and I believe I won. If I come to treasures and I go to history, you can see MVDV1, but yeah, here we go, Russell Envy. So I just won this one here about two hours ago. So right after I won that treasure, I did three of my standard hunts. Now, that is only to help me later tonight because I know I'm not going to be able to sit down for the two hours before the send reset. I'm always looking for other ways to use those sends throughout the day. So for me... Standard hunting, it's still affordable. Um, if you are maximizing or if you are sending to properties with the lowest UPX send price, 20, 25, whatever it is, 15, as long as you're sending to those small, cheap properties, you're not spending a lot of money to hunt. And you can potentially bring in more money than you spend. Or you convert those sends to spark and then your spark goes to your spark rental which helps you with property yield this is all a cycle right your property yield that helps fund my treasure hunting and my treasure hunting is how i either find more upix or more spark and that helps my spark rental and treasure hunting spark rental gives me more upx to build my property yield that is my cycle Treasure hunt, property yield, spark rental. No matter what I'm doing in the game or no matter what the game does, because I have those three things set up in a certain way, I am very agile. I can be flexible 
during bear markets or very slow weeks where trading isn't going on or when the spark market is really down and there's only like nine builds that you can actually build on and all of the spark is staked on them, what are you going to do? If you can't stake spark, you still have to bring in money in the game. You can still treasure hunt and you're still relying on your property yield. Or if you don't have property yield yet, you can treasure hunt and rent your spark to build your property yield. And if you don't have any spark, you take your property yield, you fund your treasure hunting to find spark. So for me, these three core functionalities in the game fund my upland income cycle. One of the things, trade your sends for spark, I really hope that that sticks with you and every single day, you try to use those sends that are given to you. Even when you do tours, or when you do something in the game where it requires you to like send your block explorer to another city, right? You have to send to the airport or send to the tra train station, and then you gotta get to the city, and then you send to the property, and then if you wanna go back, there are sends. It doesn't matter. Utilize those sends and at the end of the day, figure out how many sends you have left and then go do your standard hunts. Or if you don't want to figure out how many sends you have left, what's really, really cool, you just use all your sends until that message comes up and it says, you've collected all your sends. Please wait until tomorrow to collect more. So that's it. That is my upland income cycle. Property yield, spark rentals, and then treasure hunting. But you can replace treasure hunting with flipping legits, flipping block explorers, flipping cars, flipping properties. Doesn't matter. Whatever you need to do, start building your upland income cycle. Let that resonate with you for a second. Every single day that you have upland and you can log into it, you can be making money with one of three different ways. Property yield, for sure. No matter what, if you never treasure hunt, never rent your spark, property yield will continue to come into your account every single day. So pay attention to that. Use tools like the Upland Optimizer or UPX Land to build out your collections and maximize those. Don't forget, look at the mint price when buying a property. Spark rental, you want to stake the most spark that you can on the biggest builds that you can, and you want to look at that build cost. That build cost is going to help you determine where to stick your spark, especially when the spark market is down like we see today. And treasure hunting. I am always going to advocate to you to treasure hunt. Flip properties, treasure hunt, learn in small cities. Use my YouTube channel here. My YouTube channel will help you learn how to treasure hunt. I have a great two-hour guide on how to get started. Stealth hunts are the great equalizer. Anybody, when there is a stealth hunt, has a chance to win. I would always, always recommend going for the exclusives or the rare treasures, especially when they are in stealth mode, that is your best chance to compete against some of the big names in the game. The Upland Income Cycle. I'm gonna say it one more time, try to get it stuck in your head. The Upland Income Cycle. Learn it, learn how to build your own cycle, and it will get you further in the game. This has been Spark Up. I'm your host, Russell Envy. Please come over here onto Twitter. Russell E-N-V-Y is how you can find me. This is where I send out a lot of news. I'm always tweeting about like what is going on. This is a great way to stay involved with me. Ask me questions. Come over here to Twitter. Follow me. Hit this follow button. I will follow you back. Follow for follow. Twitter is a great way to find me. My YouTube channel, of course, every single time that I upload a video, you should be notified. So you want to hit the subscribe and you want to hit the little notification bell. That way you can be notified when new videos come out. You can also find me over on Reddit. I am a moderator with Upland. I moderate on the Discord and I moderate here on Reddit. I think Reddit is a great way to learn a lot about the game. There's a lot of different stuff that you can learn as far as mistakes, what people have learned, 
You can even read stuff by community members like X1 the Gamer. There's a lot of great stuff here on Reddit. I would highly suggest you come check it out. And also look right here where it says uh, the Reddit slash Upland Me. This is the official Reddit channel. You can find me over here all the time. Twitter, YouTube, Reddit. These are great places to find me. Any other questions, please make sure hit me up. This has been Spark Up with Russell Envy. Until next time, see you later.